SOLIDWORKS 2016 Basics Final Exam. In this uh, exam, basically, you could go to the Vertanu1.com webpage, and if you go to SOLIDWORKS Basics Final, you could bring up the PDF file, and here you'll see there's broken into four segments. First, model the clock body, then create an assembly, made all the components, then recreate the assembly drawing, print it out, and turn it in. So let's begin, first of all, by designing the clock body. Start a new part file and go ahead and sketch this on the front plane. Draw two circles from the origin, a big one and a small one. The outside diameter or OD will be 8 inches. The ID for internal diameter will be 0.5. Extrude these 0.25 deep and actually I believe I'm wrong on that one. Uh, the depth for this one should actually be 0.75 so I can just double click find that blue dimension 0.75 rebuild. Okay go ahead and don't put don't forget to put the fillet on of a 0.25 right on this edge. Now select this face start a sketch. Take the circle tool and at the origin drag out this next circle. And the reason for this one, this is the recess for the lens to sit on. And so this is sit, uh, 7 actually. And that gets cut 0.125 deep. The next one you could either do, if you're looking at the print, you could either do the math and do the subtraction of 0.125 from the value given on the ordinate dimensions, or just select this face right here, this little face. Start a sketch. That way you don't have to worry about the subtraction. And at the origin, drag on another circle, and this is the recess that's going to have the digits on it. And this is six and a half. And then that gets extruded a half inch in depth. Now on that floor select this face and start a sketch and we could go normal too and draw the 12 o'clock digit which is just a circle and it's going to be a diameter of 0.375 and it's going to be positioned 0.25 from the center of the clock or 2.5 inches from the center. And notice it's still blue, so just control select both centers and make that vertical so it's aligned. Otherwise, it could move left or right. And now extrude this 0.1 deep. Now, with it still selected, we could go underneath linear pattern, find circular pattern, and select this little box up here, select the outer face. And then make sure equal spacing is selected, 360 degrees, and 12 instances. We need 12 digits. Hit the green check. Now flip it around the back, select this face, and start a sketch. At the origin, drag out a larger diameter. And this is going to be 7.5 because there's going to be a recess on here. And then extrude cut that a depth of 0.125. And from here, now select this face and start a sketch. And we need to put in some bosses to hold in position the, um, the chronometer. OK, in this case, the center line, draw two center lines, a vertical and a horizontal. And then draw a circle floating right here. Dimension the circle at 0.25 in diameter. And then dimension it to each center line one inch. Be careful not to cross over the center lines or else you're going to get it twice that. And now we could mirror that. Just click and drag a fence to surround at least one of the center lines and a circle. And mirror entities and do the same over here. Click and drag selecting one center line and the two entities and click on mirror entities. Now we could extrude that, go to Features and Extrude, a depth of 0.25. Go ahead and save this. The bezel is now complete.
And so now that we have that completed, let's go ahead and bring it into a new assembly. So go to File, Make Assembly from Part. Go ahead and just hit the green check mark. It will drop it into the origin, matching up the origin of your part with the origin of the assembly. Now you just need to go to the Vertanu One web page and go to the part files. And here you'll find the final exam parts. Go ahead and select that, download them. And once they're loaded up, just click on this little arrow and you can show in folder and go ahead and just double click on that, the SOLIDWORKS there, and select the parts. In there is a Word document, which you don't need, um, and just cut those out and paste them out here or someplace where you know you're going to be able to find them. And I'm going to make those a little bit easier and larger to see. And there we go. So what we could do from here is we could use this, as we learned earlier, as our method of dragging those parts in. So I'm going to go back to SOLIDWORKS here, bring this up, could actually truncate SOLIDWORKS a little bit, and then fit this over here. Oops. And now this way we could go ahead and just drag and drop these in as we please. Now I'm going to save the assembly just to be on the safe side here, and I'm just going to call it Final. And now the first thing I would recommend bringing in is the Chrono Housing. Just drag it right in. Oops, all of them were selected, so it dropped them all in, which is fine. Um, I'm going to actually see if we can undo that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's not working. So let me just... Normally you can keep these in here. I'm just going to delete them just so you could because not everyone's going to drag them in at once like that. Okay, now what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and orient this. You see we could rotate it. I would go to the assembly and just rotate this a little bit um, under move component, go to rotate and get it so that it looks somewhat in the direction of how it's supposed to be in. These um, holes should be facing up because that's where the mounting bracket is going to be. So let's go to mate and you could select this edge here and get the upper right corner edge of the bezel. Lock that in. And then to line these, select this face to this face here. And just to be on the safe side, I usually recommend hit your space bar, go to the front view orientation, and maybe just go to wireframe for a moment and make sure that those little holes you can see are pointing up. If it doesn't look right, delete it, drop it back in. Or if you're more fluid with the software, feel free to edit it. Okay, now we could go ahead and bring in the next component here. I'm just going to deselect these. I'm going to first bring in the hour hand, and get it near or close in proximity to where it belongs. And uh, here's a little trick, as we learned before, if you hold the Alt key and drag this over, you can actually get it over to this edge and get it on the edge that you wanted to. And the only bad thing, sometimes in the Tab key, used to pop it in or out, um, which it doesn't do that. Um, it never really did pop it in. Oh, there, it actually did get it in. Okay. Otherwise, if you wanted to do this, uh, Let me just show you another method here. I'm going to drag off a copy and I'll delete that. You could do it individually. Go to mate, select like this edge to the edge between the two contrasting black and white sleeves and hit the green check. Okay, let's bring in the next one, the minute hand. Just grab that. Oh, in order to do that, cancel out of the mate tool first. Okay, now instead of using the automatic tools, I'm just going to go to Mate here, select this edge to the contrasting sleeves there. I'm going to hit, um, well in this case, it's a different diameter, so it didn't line like I had hoped. 
So I'm going to apply that, and I just have to drag it out and add the last mate, which I could go to and just select like this edge to this face, the white sleeve. Hit apply. Now we could bring in the lens, drag the lens in. And the lens, you could just go to mate, select this inner edge if you zoom up, or the outer edge actually on the back, and then select this edge right here. And then you'll have to flip it so it's facing outward. And hit apply. Okay, now on the back side, we want to bring in a bracket, drag the bracket in, and if you want, you could bring in a couple bolts too. We'll need two of those. Now you could actually, let's see if we could alt drag this over. And unfortunately, oh, there we go. It's not getting in there. You know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and mate these. Let's mate this first. Select this edge here and make sure you find the proper edge for it to mate to. Flip it if you need to. Hit apply and then get this edge to mate up to this edge here. So there's like a dozen ways you could do this. Um, I'm just showing you several ways. Just trying to show you some quick ways. They're not always useful though at times. Okay, I'm gonna mate that. The green check. And then I'll get this one over here. Select that edge right here. Now the edges really, when it's concentric, only work if they're line to line, meaning that they're the same diameters. They don't always work. And then I think in 2017, there was some talk of maybe uh, that doesn't need to be line to line anymore. Can't remember what's new, but uh, I thought I saw something on that. Might be wrong. Okay, but anyhow, um, now that that's complete, let's go to an isometric. And you need to explode this now for the drawing. So at this point, you go to ex uh, make sure you're in isometric, go to explode a view click on the lens, drag it forward, give yourself enough space for everything else, click on the minute hand, drag that forward, make sure nothing's touching, notice I'm an isometric and you don't want anything contacting it, but yet again you don't want everything like right on top of each other or too far away from each other, I should say. Okay, I'm going to click on this and I'll click on the other components along with it and just drag that backwards. I'm going to click on this and the two, oops, didn't want to click on that. Now that's going to rotate it. Don't want that. Drag that up and then click on this part and drag it down. Hit the green check. Now you could go to exploded line sketch and select that face. Make sure the arrow points down. Select this edge green check. Select this face, make sure the arrow points down, select this edge, green check, and select this face, make sure the arrow points that way. If not, hit click on it to this edge, green check. So now you have the exploded lines in there, and now collapse it. Right click and collapse. Save it. Save all. And now we could go and make a drawing. So we go make drawing from assembly. Go with the A ANSI landscape, drag in the isometric exploded, drop it in right there. Go ahead, feel free to shade it with edges. And now bring up the little view palette. And actually, we could expand this again. We don't need that explorer anymore. And I'm going to drop in a front and a left, a bottom, and hit escape. Now these three views should be hidden lines. Okay. Now make a section view. Oops. Now let me go back here. Control and tab allows you to toggle between them. Okay. So now we want to make a section view. So go to view layout, section, click right in the center. Hit the green check and make sure auto hatching is checked. Hit the just click over here to drop it. Now go to 
the uh, detail view and I want a detail view of this little region here drop it right up there now click on this view go to the annotations and tables select bill of materials green check drop it in right up there you could grab the, bo the bottom and kind of squeeze it together make a little bit more room let's move this out of the way make sure nothing's overlapping or contacting no sloppy sketches per allowed go to balloon and let's add the balloons for these Okay, make sure there's nothing overlapping. Should not have I don't want to see stuff like that. That will get marked off. Okay. And don't forget your name. Go to note. Just drop it in here. No initials, please. Uh, make sure you put your entire name on there. We have a lot of people with the same name. Uh, at least same first name. Okay, and also, if anything is overlapping down here, remember you could right click and edit the sheet format and double click on that and change the actual font size to fit it. That one didn't need to be fixed, but I'm just showing because it's very common. You go to edit sheet that that occurs. And then you just go to print and print it out, turn it in, and it'll be graded at that point. That concludes the final exam review.